wild cards are being activated all over the place in FPL right now. But when is the best time to play yours? I break it all down in the Game Week 27 preview. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Backup Fantasy Sports. It is Friday, March 1st, so happy March. My name is Ewan, and on today's episode, we're going to get into some Fantasy Premier League with a Game Week 27 preview. Lots to break down, lots of injuries, lots of FA Cup permutations have come out and about, so we know some more schedules, some more of the blanks, some more possible doubles. Lots to break down, but today's episode will primarily be about when we can play our wild cards. I will go into like a wild card draft and then how that translates to free hit 29 or just 29 in general, uh, captaincy debate, and then go over my team at the end. So just check out those timestamps in the description below. While you're there, you can just hit that thumbs up button, like, and subscribe to the channel. Just reached 150 subscribers, so thanks to everyone that does subscribe to the channel. Lots of F1 fantasy content coming out, but this will be a fantasy Premier League episode for today. So let's just get right into it here. Highest rank of the season right now, 156K. So it's been a couple of good weeks. I think I've taken a hit in four straight game weeks. So I would really like to stop giving points back to the field because I'm sure 16 points would have me right around 100K if I check that out. So I will... uh Hopefully not give back four points to the field this week. But here are the schedule, or here is the schedule for game week 27. No lunchtime kickoff. This is all UK times you see here on the screen. So all three o'clock games, Brentford, Chelsea, Everton, West Ham, Fulham, Brighton, Newcastle, Wolves, Nottingham Forest, Liverpool, Spurs, Crystal Palace, and the classic Saturday afternoon slot. And then the gay or the Saturday ends with Luton Aston Villa. Next, we've got on Sunday Burnley Bournemouth and then the Manchester Derby, which is going to be spicy. I am not sure right now. I do not have Erling Holland as my captain, but that may change come the deadline on Saturday. And then Monday night, Sheffield United versus Arsenal. That has a player that I am considering to put the armband on as of right now. Best teams, according to the Fantasy Football Scout fixture ticker over the next six game weeks. Uh, Luton and Bournemouth top there because they have an extra fixture, or Luton do now because Bournemouth blank in game week 29 after their FA Cup results. Fulham, Tottenham, and Burnley are there as well with six games over the next six game weeks, which is more than can be said for a lot of other teams as Man United, Man City, Brighton, and Liverpool find themselves in the bottom five uh, with Sheffield United also down there despite having six fixtures. So it's just that bad for the Blades that they are in the bottom five despite having six fixtures in six weeks. Man United have Man City, Everton at home, then a blank, then Brentford, Chelsea, Liverpool. Pretty brutal for Eric Ten Hag as the pressure kind of mounts. They did get through the FA Cup uh, fifth round, so they will play Liverpool in the quarterfinal, which should be quite a fun game to watch as well. But Luton up there... Topping the charts, Aston Villa this week, but then Crystal Palace, Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest, Tottenham, Arsenal, and then Bournemouth again. Bournemouth with a really good stretch here. Burnley, Sheffield United, Luton, then they blank, unfortunately, but then Everton, Crystal Palace, and Luton again. So we really want to get on the cherries as soon as possible. Dominic Solanke, rumor came out last night on X that he is going to be able to play this week so the knee injury that had him sit out of Bournemouth's uh one zip loss to Leicester is gonna uh not cost him a game week in FPL which is music to my ears because that means I'm less likely to take a hit this week so like I said I've taken a lot of hits recently really trying to avoid that uh for game week 27. The gurus of the FPL schedule, Ben Krellen and James from Planet FPL, have been hard at work this week after the FA Cup games. So Ben Krellen here, his X scroll. Uh, there will only be four fixtures in game week 29. Burnley versus Brentford, Fulham versus Spurs, Luton versus Forest, and West Ham versus Villa. All the other 12 teams, six fixtures will blank. So that will it's going to be a small one in game week 29. So we've got a plan for that. Not sure what my plan is yet. Uh, kind of probably not great idea, but I think I'm going to wait until next week and see what happens um, with some injuries. See if we get any 
news about that kind of stuff. And then Ben goes on to continue. Game week 29 blank should all move to the midweek in either game week 34 or game week 37. Game week 34 fixtures will be postponed if either side reaches the FA Cup semifinals, and those postponements should mostly move to the midweek in either game week 34 or game week 37. If Chelsea reach the FA Cup semifinals, then one of their postponements would have to move to a midweek outside of game weeks 34 slash 37. It would most likely be Chelsea versus Tottenham or Bournemouth or Brighton versus Chelsea moving to game week 35 slash 36. Here's my game week 34 spreadsheet. Um, so that just kind of shows us that there are five confirmed fixtures right now, but Arsenal Wolves, Brighton, Chelsea, Man City, Tottenham, Man United, Newcastle, and Fulham versus Liverpool are all at risk on FPL.plan. Um, uh, the Planet FPL James's predictions are out for there. So go over there, check out all the predictions for their schedules for the next game weeks because he has kind of slotted in where he thinks the fixtures are going to fall. So game week 34, he thinks Crystal Palace, Man United, Newcastle, and Sheffield United will have a double. Um, that's kind of according to his predictions for the FA Cup quarterfinals as well. Game week 36, he has Chelsea and Tottenham with a double. And then game week 37, Arsenal, Bournemouth, Brighton, Chelsea, Everton, Liverpool, Man City, and Wolves with a double. Something's going to happen that it's not going to be perfect, but he does a bang up job. I am actually halfway through their new podcast episode where they talk about chip strategy. It is fantastic. He breaks everything down like just whew, one of the best in FPL. So definitely give that podcast a listen. Uh, it's called Chipping In More, I believe. So definitely check that out if you are a serious FPL manager that wants to really plan ahead. But wildcards being activated, lots of injuries, lots of people realizing that they haven't really planned all that well for game week 29, which does include myself, but I don't really have an inkling to activate my wildcard. So I went through three windows here, kind of listed the pros and cons for each situation let me know which one you are going to go with in the comments below or hit me up on x at unfpl so game week 27 wild card a lot of people doing that this week this could also apply to game week 28 wild card so these are kind of the two same things but you could get on informed players right now a lot of us are holding on to city assets arsenal assets but with them blanking in game week 29 they city have tough fixtures they have man united this week they have liverpool the following week and then they blank so a lot of people have Man City players after they just doubled and then had a good fixture, um, struggling to get rid of them with our free transfers. But if you wildcard now, you can just get out of that and kind of prosper over the next three weeks. And then even after they're blank, Man City play Arsenal. So it's not the easiest run of fixtures for the defending champs. Another pro is you can prepare for double game week 28 and blank game week 29. So Bournemouth don't have a fixture in game week 29. But Luton do. So Luton have three games over the next two game or four games over the next three game weeks, but they will double and play in blank game week 29. So like Alfie Doughty, Carlton Morris, Kaminsky, you can definitely get on those assets for the gate, the double game week in 28 and the blank game week in 29, which may help you out quite a bit. And also just swerve the template. A lot of our teams are starting to look very similar. If you wildcard now, you could potentially bring back Mo like a lot of us can't afford to bring back Mo Salah right now you could get on Mo for three of the next four game weeks and just be flying if the Egyptian comes right back to form like he did against Brentford uh, when he came off the bench to have a superb day and outscored a lot of the other doublers despite not getting the start in either game that week, as he did not play the second game against Luton in double game week 25 the cons of a game week 27 wild card are you're probably poorly prepared for double game week 34 and double game week 37. It does help that we have a little bit of a guesstimation about those fixtures now, but only using free transfers to get those players in could be a bit of a struggle if you also have to navigate this blank game week 29, which is very doable. Uh, it's just a little bit of you got to be really prepared to kind of you might you'll probably take more hits to get on some of the better players and you're still not sure what those FA Cup quarterfinal results are going to be like because it's possible that Newcastle upset Man City and that Liverpool lose to Man United and you're also relying on Bournemouth and Luton double game week as your big swing which 
Bournemouth have been a little trending down. They kind of had a mid-season spike, I would say, and everyone kind of fell in love with them. Their underlying data is still pretty good. But if you've watched any of their games, they've been a little tepid, not as like firing on all cylinders recently. Uh, and then Luton, one of the worst teams in the league. They do have a double game week, but how long are you going to want to keep their assets in there? Doughty, maybe a season keeper, but probably not Kaminsky, probably not Carlton Morris. Uh, so that's kind of not great either, because then you're keeping bad players in your lineup for a lot longer, which is not something that we want to do in FPL. Game week 30 slash 31 wildcard, kind of lump these together because it depends how hard you dead end into game week 29, if you use your free hit chip, that kind of thing. So that's kind of, you could probably wildcard in either of these weeks. This will depend on the FA Cup results. So you'll have a good, est so pros for a game week 30 slash 31 wildcard are, you'll have a good estimate for the rest of season schedule after the FA Cup quarterfinals. And you can probably just ride Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal triple up for the remaining game weeks. And that will depend on the results for the FA Cup court finals, obviously. But even if if Man City and Liverpool double in game week 37 or whatever, like you'll still have their assets. You'll still be able to keep them. And you can use the free hit chip in game week 34 if you're very prepared. But the cons of this are you do have to navigate this blank game week that's coming up in 29 with the free transfers or your free hit chip. So you really have to commit to the free hit chip, which would be like a triple Tottenham, uh, probably a lot of Luton, some West Ham, some Villa. So the fixtures aren't really all that great. Like if we go back to Ben Krellen's tweet here. So the fixtures for game week 29 are Luton versus Nottingham Forest, West Ham versus Aston Villa, Fulham versus Tottenham, Burnley versus Brentford. So You'd ideally have Sun, Maddo, Richarlson there. You'd have Tony. You'd have Watkins, Bowen, Iwanoe. Um, and then, yeah, like Doughty. Like, I don't think any of those fixtures are good for clean sheets. So you'd really want to load up on the attack. But is that really all that tempting? Like, is it possible that Fulham just kind of pull one off against Tottenham? Like, yes. Like, it just doesn't feel like there's a huge opportunity for free hit 29 to be explosive, but a lot of people are going to go there. Very understandable. I think I'm going to be in the taking a lot of hits camp. That's why I'm really trying to not take a hit this week. Cause I think I will be taking at least two minus fours over the next two game weeks, possibly a minus eight at some point as well. So that will be interesting because I really do want to get to this game week 30, 31 wildcard. This is my ideal uh, wildcard window. Just gives myself more information, sets myself up well. Um, so the cons are, yeah, navigating blank game week 29 with free transfers or the free hit chip. And then you're still a little bit of a way off a preferred bench boost in a double game week. So, but so if you would wildcard here, you would probably bench boost 37 because you'd have the triple up on Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, which I don't see a lot of us getting off of as the season winds down because it's a three-horse race for the title right now. A couple of very important games coming up for uh, to decide that, like Man City. If Man City gets six points against Liverpool and Arsenal, and or nine points against United, Liverpool, Arsenal over their next three games, then that's a pretty bad sign that they will not be losing the league because then they will have gotten through one of the toughest, the toughest part of their schedule, I would say. And they should steamroll like city kind of do towards the end of every season where they are just unstoppable at some point. So you're still a little bit away from a bench boost in a double game week, which would be 37 for me. And then I would free hit in 34 just to not worry about any blanks or doubles. Although there was something going around on X last night saying that game week 34 could just be a single game week because they could just move all the fixtures beforehand to the midweek. So there might not be a double game week. So that's another reason against a game week 27 wild card or a game week 28 wild card because there's all this stuff that we still don't know. Like if we wait here, we can get more information and kind of figure that out as well. Game week 33 plus wild card. So just kind of anything later than this in the season. You can obviously set up well for the double game week in 34 if that's going to happen. Uh, you'll 
certainly know the rest of season schedule and how to prepare for those double game weeks. And you can immediately bench boost in double game week 34. Um, so you'd have probably 15 doublers for that if you uh, wild card in game week 33. Not saying that you couldn't do that if you had a game week 30 slash 31 wild card, but you wouldn't be able to like get Man City and Liverpool on there because they would be with um, probably some FA Cup semifinal fixtures there. Cons are you're once again navigating the blank game week 29 with free transfers or free hit chip and the double game week 37 could be the better game week. I actually feel pretty confident in saying that the double game week in 37 will be the better double game week than game week 34. Um, so that is, but you are closer to if you, if you want to bench boost in that. But if you're just taking a swing, you want to get into doublers for game week 34, you can bench boost immediately in game week 34 and free hit. Uh, the problem is that you're free hitting in a lot of good players that a lot of teams will already have. So that might be a disadvantage for you there as well. So I think my favorite game week to or window to wildcard in is the game week 30 slash 31 wildcard. And then I'd probably say 27 if you are just kind of stuck in the mud, uh, you're not really, you're kind of going backwards a little bit. You don't really have good players. Like there's no reason that you can't wild card in six doublers next week. And it goes spectacularly because Bournemouth have a great three fixtures here. Let's go back to the fixture ticker here. Bournemouth, Burnley, Sheffield United, and Lewin. It doesn't really get much better than that for any FPL side. It's not like Liverpool or Man City are playing these teams, but Bournemouth still quite attacking could get some returns like Neto would definitely be in a game week 27 wild card for me. And this is actually what I did. I went on um, FPL team and kind of built out a game week 27 wild card. So that would be Neto in goal, Andy Robertson, Gabrielle Sanessi at the back, Richarlson, Son, Saka, Madison in the midfield, Watkins, Holland, and Solanke up top with Sells, Region, Barkley, and Doughty in on the bench there so i would have one two three i'd have six wild or five doublers for game week 28 which would be plenty i would roll that transfer in game week 28 and you would end up with the team on the right hand side of the screen here with two transfers in game week 29 it would only leave you with 10 players so you would still be like having one player down that's the kind of the linchpin there like gabrielle i have in there you could take him out and put someone that has a game week um or plays in game week 29 quite easily but um you know didn't have all that time to put it together so that would be your game week 29 would be you would take out um you would take out Saka for gibbs white here and then you would also take out Holland for Tony, and that would leave you with 10 guys and a pretty strong team. You probably have a bunch of the players that people would be using their free hit on. So you would save that free free hit if you have it, uh, and you could use it in 34. And then you could actually have, that would give you, if you use the free hit in 34, that would give you enough time to build out your squad to get to a pretty good looking double game week 37 squad that a lot of players might have already or be using their bench boost on. So that would kind of buy you enough time to get to where you need to be for game week 37. The problem is that you will have two Luton assets there, Barkley, Doughty, that you probably want to get rid of. Even like Region, you probably want to get rid of. Gibbs White, maybe. But those teams are all going to be in a relegation battle. So they should be trying to go pretty hard in every game i don't think any of those teams will be on the beach quote unquote captaincy debate for game week 27 haven't really touched on a lot of game week 27 for this week but these are the five options i picked out here these are the rotoballer.com rankings go check those out shout out to um, jack burkhart for winning the fswa soccer writer of the year award back to back dang it jack i'll uh, maybe i'll get you next year but congrats to him well deserved for uh, all his DFS and soccer writing over there on rotowire, rotowire.com. Great guy to interact with on X as well. Very smart when it comes to soccer. So check that stuff out there. Um, but here are the five options I picked out. Holland, Saka, Sun, Watkins, and De Bruyne. 
Sun and De Bruyne, pretty, they're eliminated pretty quickly off the bat for me. Uh, Crystal Palace, surprisingly, seventh in expected goals conceded over the last six game weeks. De Bruyne, always a minutes, minutes risk despite four assists in the FA Cup in midweek. So not sure about him, but he is big game Kev for a reason. And despite Man United's form, I do think this is a big game for Kev. But 4.93 predicted points for him, 0.63 XJ per 90 over the last six. Um, so it kind of comes down to Holland, Saka, and Watkins for me. Right now, uh, Holland's predicted for 7.38 points, Saka 6.78, Watkins 5.45. Holland's XGI per 90 is 0.97, Watkins is 0.87, and Saka's 1.25. So it's really tight to choose between these three guys. And then expected goals conceded. Holland going against Man United, they are 12th for XGC over the last six, whereas Sheffield United are 15th and Luton are 18th. And Luton don't really sit back all that much. They kind of they score a bunch of goals at home. They will kind of take the game to Aston Villa. But Aston Villa is probably the offense that I trust the least out of Man City. Arsenal and Aston Villa. So that makes me a little nervous to go with Watkins. Although I do have a little bit of an inkling that he is going to do well. And it's my highest rank of the season. So it's like I've been very steady climb over the last five game weeks, just doing the kind of boring right thing, making the smart move. Although I did go against Holland last week with my captaincy with uh, Saka. So that worked out well. That was like a mini risk that came out well. Saka probably should have had more, to be honest. But um, yeah, I'm not sure if this is the week to go against Holland. He scored five goals in the FA Cup. So is going against someone that just scored five goals in a, Man in a Manchester Derby, 0.97 XGI per 90. He's missed a ton of big chances recently. They just haven't been going in. Man United, not exactly sound at the back. Saka, Monday night, atmosphere could be a little electric at uh, Sheffield. So, yeah, I if I was a bolder manager, I think I would just stick on Watkins and see what happens. But I think it's going to come down to Holland versus Saka for me, uh, unfortunately, with that going on. But, yeah, Holland could have a hat trick in the first half, and I'll just be crying behind the couch on Sunday afternoon. So, that's not a uh, picture that I want to think about too much. FPL review for my squad here. Foden to Sun, Huang to Sun, or Roll. I did fall into the Huang He Chan trap last week, so bad job by me there. But I'm also inclined to kind of roll this week um, if I want to, because Richarlson could be injured. Solanke is supposed to be back. We're going to find a lot, a lot more in the press conferences this week, but... Phil Foden against Man United, he's been in some bang-up form as well. Like, why would I get rid of him before a game against Man United where his son is going to play the seventh best XGC defense over the last six? I don't know. Yeah, I might just roll, but Foden and the son, probably the move. He Chan to son would get me an extra player, likely, because it sounds like He Chan is not going to play, but roll is the third best option on FPL Review. Best Football Hub agrees with FPL Review with Foden to Sun, but I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do that. I think Sun was predicted to go up last night. I didn't check this morning, but we will. Uh, point one is not really that big of a difference. Squad right now is Ariola and Goal, Saliba, Gabriel, and Ake at the back. Foden, Saka, Richarlson, Palmer in the midfield. I do have the armband on Saka right now. And then Watkins, Holland, Solanke up front with He Chan, Van Heck, and Charlie Taylor on the bench. Uh, Kaminsky is on the bench as well as my backup goalkeeper, so I'm not sure. I might put Kaminsky in over Areola. Areola just seems like that game will be 2-1 West Ham, but Everton will get one shot on target, and it'll go in, whereas I feel like Kaminsky could maybe get some safe points. He did that against Man City and... Uh, uh, Liverpool in the double game week. So it didn't go too bad for him there. I think he got seven points for me. So that could be like a three pointer versus an aerial, a one pointer or something. So that's kind of where my head is at for game week 27, just over 20, 
24 hours to go until the game week 27 deadline. Like 30 hours to go until the game week 27 deadline at time of recording. But uh, do hit me up on X at UNFPL if you want to talk about any decisions. Uh, today is a big F1 fantasy day, so I will be doing a live stream there. If you are also playing that game, my live stream will be at 2 p.m. low or UK time today. Uh, so definitely check that out if you're into F1 fantasy. But that is kind of where I'm at for game week 27. Hopefully your decisions are a little bit easier than mine. Let me know when you are going to wildcard or if what kind of chip strategy you've got in the comments below. Like and subscribe to the channel or the podcast, wherever you're watching, listening. But once again, thanks for listening and watching, and I will talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.